This is Brother Frank, and welcome to another episode of The Remnant Call. Glad to have you here with me. Um, folks, It's I feel like an infant again sometimes in my spiritual walk with the Lord, uh, because sometimes that journey takes a turn up or a turn down. And what I mean by that is we are sometimes on the top of the mountain, like Elijah, slaying the prophets of Baal, and, and sometimes we feel like we're down in the valley, crying out like Elijah did because he was afraid of Jezebel. And we all go through it at times, but there's it's amazing how when we're down in the low parts, and if I've explained in my last few programs, it's been a hard several weeks um, for me with work and different things, and it's in those low areas that we learn how to worship again. And tonight I want to just talk with you briefly about a prophecy that Demetri Dudeman gave. And there's a part of that prophecy that I don't think anybody remembers. My father brought it up to me uh, this morning, actually, uh, on the way to work. He, he sent me a message, son, you got to call me. It hit him. And, and I, I want to share with you because it's important that we understand uh, not only what's going on, but what was Demetri was shown lines up exactly with what Scripture says. And so let's pray and let's get into this. Father, in Jesus' name, I need you to get me through this, Lord, because this is important that we understand this. Lord, I it's important for me that what I'm about to say, Lord, that I truly live and walk in everything that I do. Lord, forgive me for my own hypocrisy. Lord, that I would once again, uh, as so often needed, learn how to worship you in spirit and in truth, even in the fire, Lord. Because it's in the fire is where we see the one that looks like the Son of Man who's standing there with us. But Lord, sometimes in our flesh, in our, our stubbornness, it takes the fire again to reawaken us. Uh, from the cares of this world back to the things that are important of God. And Lord, the cares are so deceiving, so simple, uh, yet so easily do they get us off track. And so Lord, in the name above every name, Yeshua, I pray against this, that the mighty powers of heaven would stand around this show, Lord, and that you would speak from this point forward is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share with you a couple of things that Brother Demetri Dudeman shared. Um, You can go and read all of his uh, prophecies online. You can read them uh, for free. Uh, You can order the little book, uh, Dreams and Visions uh, from God. Uh, You can order that little book, and I think it's like four bucks if you want to get it in hardback from their website. Um, I like a hardback version, but it's all free on the internet, so please feel free. But I want to share with you some two things. Um, This was the one was right at the very end. Um, It's it's listed on their website, and I'm not even sure if it's actually in uh, the book. Uh, of the Dreams and Visions, but it's something that Virginia Baldia uh, wrote in 1997, two days before taking my father to the hospital. I heard his voice in the early morning hours. I saw something. As usual, I got my recorder and went to his bedside. He would not let me record it. I don't remember everything he said, but I would like to share with you that which I do remember. My father stated, the Lord showed me a very large bear. It was as big as a building, and it began to do battle with an unarmed man. Do you see what I have shown you? A voice said. This is how it will be when the hardships come over America. No one will be able to defend her. Only those that trust in me will be spared. Everything will start as a heavy rain on a summer day at a time when you least expect it. There was more 
but I don't remember the rest from Virginia Boldia. Now, I share that with you because I believe it will truly happen in the United States at a time when we least expect it. And it will happen in such a way that we will find ourselves completely unarmed. Though concern I am not worried about so much as America because, folks, America has chosen her path. But I'm talking about the individuals, those who are following the Lord right now. May we not be found unarmed in the Spirit. Because it will only be the Lord who can save us. Now, tonight's program is titled The Bear Awakens. And we know in the Bible, we know not only from uh, biblical, but from the world in general, we know about the bear. And we understand about Russia and its part as being the bear. And I want to. And we, we, we do understand that the bear has been awoken and, and a lot of the bear's allies. And I want to read with you, uh, this is called, uh, this is from another dream that Brother Dimitri had in 1997. It says this, I knelt beside my bed to pray. As I do every night before going to sleep, after finishing my prayer, I opened my eyes, but I was no longer in my room. Instead, I found myself in a forest. I looked around And to my right, I saw a man dressed in white who pointed his finger and said, see and remember. It took me a while to find what he was pointing at. It was a small bear who seemed half dead lying on the ground. As I continued to watch this bear, it began to breathe deeper with every passing minute. It seemed to revive itself. And as I watched, it also became angrier. It then became, began to grow. Soon it was larger than the forest floor, and it grew larger. It continued to become angrier. It then began to paw the ground so that when the paw hit the ground, the earth would shudder. The bear continued to devastate all that stood in the path until it, be, it came upon some men with sticks trying to fend it off. By this time, the bear had grown so large that it simply crushed the men underfoot and continued its rampage. Sounds like that other thing that Virginia Boldia said. Trying to fight a bear with sticks is ridiculous. Continuing on here. I was stunned by what I saw and asked the man standing beside me, what does this mean? At first, they thought the great bear was dead. Sounds like Russia, don't we? Yes, it's torn down. Communism is done with. Uh, Sounds like what we've heard, but all we know too well that that has been completely turned around. Now, the bear is wide awake again, and it is pawing the earth and flexing its muscles. Continuing on, the man said, As it will begin to stir once again, they will consider it harmless. Hmm, sounds like us. Remember Barack Obama? Uh, You know, 1980s called and want their foreign policy back. Suddenly it will grow strong once more with the purpose of violence. God will blind the eyes of those that continue to trample on the sacrifice of Christ's blood until the day the bear will strike swiftly. Now that's very interesting. That's very interesting. That God will blind the eyes of those who continue to trample on the sacrifice of Christ's blood. Those that forsake what the Lord's done, those who may be even called upon the name, but they they forsake the things of God, that they will be blind and ignorant to what is happening on this earth. Continues on here. This day will catch them unprepared, and it will be just as you saw. Now, that is a scary thought. Now, if you've read Brother Dimitri's uh, warnings, you know, and if you've watched his, I, you should go, please watch his uh, his testimony, Wake Up America. You can find it on, I'll try to link to it in the program. Uh, it's a powerful, uh, te- his testimony of his, the way he was persecuted and, and suffered and electrocuted and, and needles under his fingernails and just the things he suffered for the Lord were tremendous. But God sent him here in a $5 suit to preach a message to a backslidden nation about repentance and that judgment was coming. But it was hard for people, it's hard for people to understand when there's prosperity that these things can happen. But God used him to warn for no 
evident gain. He, like I said, he's he wore a. Fi- I mean, his suit. He, he didn't have nice things. He didn't wear wear nice stuff. He was just here to share a message that came from much, much persecution in his life. When he was finished, there were those that were awakened. But over time, it began to you know fall by the wayside. There was a heightened awareness uh, around 1999. Of course, everybody thought it was Y2K. It was interesting, though, that people understood the prophecies. It seemed like a whole lot better, at least about the part about Ezekiel 38 back around then than they do today. They've kind of forgot about the Ezekiel 38 war and the attack from Russia and Libya and several other countries there, uh, Gog and Magog and Meshach. And if you don't know Know the history of Meshach uh, in that area up in Moscow and the Muscovites and all that stuff, uh, you'll understand what territories, if you look historically into where that's talking about, uh, along with Persia and other people that will come to attack, but also will go and attack the land of unwalled villages. Now, if you're not familiar with Israel, they are not a land of unwalled villages. They have walls around to protect them. They have always had walls throughout their history, but there is another group of people that the Bible says there will be a simultaneously attack that is done in Ezekiel 38. At the same time, shall an evil thought, uh, I believe it said, shall come into their mind, and they'll say, let's go up to the land of unwalled villages. Those are at, that rest. They're at ease. They're, and and it, you're like, well, well, wait a second. Is Russia's not due north of us? Well, actually, yes, it is. If you go straight up over the globe and you come down the other side, guess who is directly to the north of us? All those people, they are exactly to the north of Israel, and they're exactly to the north of America. And, oh, yes, you if you haven't known anything, you ought to at least know about Russia's get, moving into the North Pole and having great interest for years up in that area uh, to launch attacks from, fly planes, all that kind of stuff. It's preparing for attack on this country. And people were aware of that a long time, but it's like, it's like people have fallen off the map in these last days. Or they've gotten on to other stuff that's that's just, you know, leading us away from truth and the word of God anymore. But out of all of this, that the Russian bear, and if you haven't heard more about that, just listen to any of the programs where I've had uh, Jeff Nyquist and ben, Brother Benjamin on here. I mean, just absolutely detailed of what's going on in there. You'll find out more about this. But there's a part of this prophecy that is more important, and nobody remembers it. This is what shocked my dad this morning, that he had to send this to me. And 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 it was so powerful, I decided I needed to share this tonight with you. I'm going to continue on to read this, because this is the part of this dream and vision that you got to understand. I'm going to pick up and continue. The man then said, tell my people, the days are numbered and the sentence has been passed. If they will seek my face and walk in righteousness before me, I will open their eyes that they may see the danger see the danger approach. If they only look to the approaching danger, they too will be caught up and trampled underfoot. Only in righteousness will they find safety. Suddenly, I was once again by myself in my room on my knees, with sweat covering my face. Wow. Did you hear that? Those that will seek the Lord, that will focus on him, he will make us aware to the times. But if only thing we are looking at is the destruction and coming, we will actually be caught up in the destruction with it. Now that's interesting because in Isaiah uh, thirty-three fifteen, listen to what the word of God says. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressor, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stops, stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and from sh- and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. So God says here, listen, those that walk righteously, they will not want to sit here and look at all this bloodshed and destruction. It will not be their desire. And they will shut their ears from hearing of all the evil that's going on. What he's trying to say is that God's people will not be obsessed with the evil that is taking place in this world today. 
But if all we do is focus upon the evil that's going on. Now, listen, we need to be aware. God is very, very much about us being aware. We should not be ignorant of what the devil is doing. We should not be ignorant of what's going on. We need to be aware. But if our focus is on the coming calamity instead of the Lord, we will end up being in the coming calamity instead of being with the Lord. Now, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. God wants us to do his will in these last days, as he has always wanted us to do. But specifically, there are reasons. The Lord needs to lead. He will lead his people. It's in the Micah. He talks about we should not trust in men. We need to wait upon the Lord. That means there is an activeness from our side of seeking guidance from the Lord's side so that we understand what we're going to. Because if all we do is listen and watch the news and worry about this, we're going to end up in what we've been watching. Instead of seeking the Lord, asking him what we should do and what we need to do so that he can then guide us through these end times. I'm not saying don't ever be aware. We need to be aware. But your focus has to be more upon the Lord than it is upon the destruction that's coming. And this past three weeks, I am trying to relearn from the Lord again that the words or the the cares of this world, even in my job, they don't matter a hill of beans because the truth is it's what God wants and not what this world is. If my business crashes tomorrow, it doesn't matter because the truth is it's about God and not about me. And if I don't get my eyes focused upon what's going on right now and off the woes of me of what's going on in this world, because trust me, I can even get in my own pity party at times. But God is so faithful to reteach us and to remind us again. And tonight's program is about a reminder. The bear is awake. Destruction is coming. But if your focus is on the destruction, woe unto you, you better look out. The Bible specific, it's uh, so often, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That means that God first, everything else second, because if God's first, he will then take care of everything else. If you're worried about how you're going to prepare, seek the Lord. If you're worried about what you're going to do, seek the Lord. If you're worried about anything in this life, seek the Lord and allow him to take care of it because in the end, it will not matter. Only he will matter. Those who are focused on the destruction will be caught up in it, but those who walk in righteousness and focus upon the Lord will be taken care of. God is faithful, and he has a faithful group of people. And if you have messed up If you have done something wrong yourself, if you've been like me the last three weeks and all you can see is the problems of what's going on, you know, in work and everything else, you know what? It's okay, but we just need to turn back and cry out and ask God to forgive us. I'm saying right now in this program, Lord, forgive me for the last three weeks of my life where I've been more focused on what's going on. You've heard my last three programs. It felt like hell for the last three weeks, but I'll tell you what, God is faithful and in the end, and it doesn't matter. All that matters is salvation in Jesus Christ and my family that we are under the blood of the Lord and Savior. That is what it matters to me and is what is important to me. Everything else can burn. It doesn't matter as long as we have the Lord. I want to warn you tonight, brother and sister. Keep your eyes open on Jesus. Keep your eyes on our heavenly father and he is faithful and just to do that which you cannot do in your own flesh and that's deliverance. The Lord is about deliverance and there's no incantation. There's no prayer of Jabez. There's nothing there. There's no secret formula. The formula is simply this, get on your knees seek his face, cry out, and let him do his work. This is Brother Frank on the Remnant Call saying to everybody, good night and shalom. Zion, for the day of the Lord is come. Lord,
Don't let him die.